The combat mission in Iraq is over. Combat troops are out. As of the end of this month, Operation Iraqi Freedom officially ends, and a new mission here begins. Operation Iraqi Freedom, OIF. I keep remembering since I've been here um, that old urban myth, at least I think it was an urban myth, about the original name for the war here being proposed as Operation Iraqi Liberation. That, of course, was a problem because if it was Operation Iraqi Liberation, instead of wearing OIF insignia, everyone in the military would be wearing patches that said OIL on them. OIL, and that, of course, would be awkward. When George W. Bush's father invaded Iraq in 1991, Saddam set the oil fields on fire. They were ready for that this time around when Bush the son invaded, but it didn't happen, at least not to the same extent. Oil still accounts for 95 percent of Iraq's income. Iraq is sitting on the world's second largest oil reserves. But for a country that is afloat on a sea of oil, on a sea of energy, the defining feature of life here at least at this time of year, is a lack of power, a lack of electricity. Summertime in Iraq is miserable. This year, the holy month of fasting, in which you don't drink even water during the day, is falling during August when the days are long and it's 120 degrees, not just at noon, but often all day long. You get 15 minutes of electricity here, five minutes of electricity there. Having access to a generator and the diesel to power it, to power a fan, to power an air conditioner if you're lucky, that's the difference between living in hell and living in purgatory. As an American visiting here for the first time at the end of this war, the magnitude of what we paid for and did here under the flag of the United States of America is staggering. As Americans have been pouring out of here for the past year, you can see the huge Godzilla footprint here that the American presence has left behind. Yes, it's bases and, and checkpoints and the whole green zone and all of that, but, but it's also the fact that we took over their country. We deposed their leadership, we threw them into civil war, and we are now trying to vaguely have them hold it together sort of while we get out. The history of Iraq for the last generation is Saddam taking power, a decade of the war with Iran, where we took Iraq's side, uh, then the first American war, then a decade of sanctions, then the second American war, toppling Saddam, presiding over, uh, presiding over a civil war, uh, and now there's us leaving. After all that, good luck. Hope it all works out for you guys. It, it, it makes sense that the combat mission is ending. Frankly, since U.S. forces were pulled out of Iraqi cities last year, the transition to a post-combat mission based on training and assisting and a lot of packing up and leaving, that transition has been well underway for a long time. But the post-combat mission is to, to, to try and, and make it as right here as we can for as long as we can, for as long as we can sustain the effort. The training and assistance mission is not going to get as much attention as a war effort. We all understand that. But it's what Americans are doing here now, and they're doing it in harm's way as our post-war make-it-right effort. And that post-war make-it-right effort is complicated, and it is fascinating. This is the Tigris. And this river is, uh, runs right through the center of Baghdad. In fact, the green zone is separated from the rest of Baghdad by the Tigris River. The 14th of July bridge uh, is just over here. You can see that over the top of those boats. And you don't think of Baghdad as being a riverfront city. It's not the most beautiful river in the world. It's dirty. It's black water conditions in terms of diving and everything. But this is right in the heart of it. And this needs policing, too. What are the divers training for? What's the security function that the divers are training for? Well, the main purpose of training divers is to uh, search and uh, recover. Uh, especially when the sun, during the summertime, uh, a lot of Iraqi people, they are swimming in the river and they drown. So we need divers to recover their bodies. And uh, also back in 2006, when the terrorist activities, they, they blow up uh, some of the bridges. So our divers helped uh, to uh, rebuild the bridges. There is an issue, there is a history of police being used not just to protect the population uh, in Iraq, but also as people who get stuff done for people in power. Right. Police being essentially deployed for political means, for powerful people. How do you, how do you defeat that other than by calling on people's individual valor and patriotism? But you have to start at the top and you work at the bottom as well. 
and that is probably the most fundamental change in the Iraqi police forces. The duties of the police before 2003 were obviously not to secure and defend the Iraqi people. They were to secure and defend the government against the Iraqi people. Mm -hmm. And we have a fundamental mm -hmm. difference now. And then, although polls are what they are, it's very clear over 70 percent of the Iraqi people have the confidence in their police forces. And when you talk about the federal police forces, who just a few years ago, when they were known as the national police, they were not the good guys. Yeah. And now it's a fundamental change. I will tell you. Um I don't want to embarrass anybody, but while we were out shooting in downtown Baghdad yesterday, uh, a, a, we, we were close enough to a checkpoint that a federal police officer came over to check us out and see what we were doing. He was incredibly professional, incredibly to the point, had a totally rational exchange with him, and it was all right for us to be out there. Ten minutes later, a traffic police officer came over and asked us for a bribe. <laughs> so it's the federal police um, operating at a, at a noticeable level of professionalism, just in terms of my anecdotal experience since we've been here. And, and the Iraqi police understand that. I mean, corruption is a problem. But as you know, you've traveled. Corruption is a problem in a lot of places. Yeah. And, uh, but I'll tell you what they're doing to address it. They've got literally thousands of internal affairs, plainclothes officers that, that are able to move and address a problem.